What's good everybody, it's your boy Jet Ski Chuck back with another creepy and scary TikTok reaction video. We're on hyper mode. If you haven't already, smash that like and subscribe button. We're about to dive into these dark waters. Let's go. <laughs> Tell me that tree didn't say ow. Oh. ...are open, it becomes clear as day. We are the ants. Question everything, friends. That was actually good fo footage of that UFO. You could clearly see it and homie zoomed all the way in it. That was good fo footage. Looked like it was about four of them. I don't know where they were going, but they definitely were together. Atlantis was the whole planet. Earth was Atlantis. Everyone is sitting on top of Atlantis right now, wherever you are. It's just that one of the capitals was the Ring City, which was one of the most beautiful of the capitals, but there were capitals all over the planet. And so these beings, they started going to war against each other using human beings as cattle to fight these crazy wars. And you can find a lot of these wars in the book of Deuteronomy in the Bible, in the Old Testament of the Bible. The book of Deuteronomy literally lays out a lot of these wars that are being issued by these gods. And I do mean gods with an S because these people, whoever translated the Bible, they by accident on purpose didn't realize that they put God singular when all the translations, if you go back to the original text, say gods with an S. They took the S off the end to give you the illusion of monotheism right they did that that's not all they did <laughs> yeah, but they yeah did a lot more than that <laughs> atlantis was the whole planet or he was talking about the son the father and the holy never mind the mystery behind the ancient technology of the gujian sword Discovered in a submerged tomb in China in 1965, this sword, aged at over 2,400 years, is heralded as one of the sharpest ever made. Astoundingly, despite its age, the blade emerged from its wooden casing gleaming and pristine, bearing two razor-sharp edges. One archaeologist even inadvertently sliced his hand when lightly grazing the blade to gauge its sharpness. Scientific analysis suggests the sword's enduring sharpness can be attributed to a coating of a distinctive alloy known as chromium sulfide, 
What's intriguing is that chromium sulfide is an elusive metal, necessitating extraction at scorching temperatures close to 2,000 degrees Celsius. This poses the question, how did individuals over 2,400 years ago craft such a sword, particularly when the methodology to extract chromium wasn't developed until 1937? This find reiterates the notion that our ancestors might have held a plethora of advanced technological insights that, for unknown reasons, have faded into obscurity over the millennia. The mystery behind... They are definitely withholding information. Not only can we see it in the buildings, but we now can see it in the weapons. Sorry for this uh, mishap, uh, the uh, emergency team is, is on the way. Please tell me somebody wasn't in there, but I didn't see any type of parachute eject or anything. And they said that thing cost $55,000. Oh my goodness. You should have came to me. I would have built you one for 3000 Someone said in the comments, this might be King Arthur. How crazy would that be? They left him with a sword, though. You catching this? Yeah. He got another boomerang. It's lost a lot. Leave me alone. Road rage, I'm telling y'all, be safe out there, man. You never know what someone's going through. Treat everyone with respect. It might just be the day where their cup spills. Kill. This is a very, very dangerous thing. You've got to know where you... You've got to know the breeze. That's why it helps flying. Watch the breeze go out there. You see, this is the thing about it. Okay, show us again, then. Okay. We'll have to watch out. I'm going to throw, this is the Jubilee number, off we go. She'll try to come back, I hope she wants to. Look, okay, look out, now, now look out, boys, look out, look out, look out, look out. These can kill. It's a very, very dangerous thing, you've got to know where you Just say you don't know what you're doing, bro. Watch the breeze.
Yeah, this is a good one. Making me sit up. This is a good one, y'all. Yeah? I think I did see something like that on Joe Rogan. But they were talking about this sun was they had this giant UFO coming absorbing something from the sun. Was that? Oh, that might have not been him. Look how it's siphoning. That looks legit. This looks legit. They said, would you do this job for $5,000 is the name of the post. Look how crazy he's acting. Did he get? There's no way one got in there. Oh, he's got a pull a nest out, it looks like. Dang, look how big that nest is. Those aren't yellow jackets. Those look like something a little bit thicker. It looks like they can go in his ear, doesn't it? Oh yeah, those are those are definitely thicker. Those aren't no no yellow jackets. And they said $5,000 just to do that. Man, if they give me that suit, I'd do it for three. Quick money. Look at that. Give me that suit. I'll suit up for three right now. Oh, you need that nest out and you give me that suit? Psh, say less. That's rent for a couple months. I'd do it. Would y'all do it? Would y'all do this job? They said for five thousand. That's that was the thing. Damn, did y'all see that thing move? That is crazy. This is it? Kinda looks like the dude from Tekken. Honestly, I forgot his name, it's been years. It's real, whatever it is. That many people ain't, this ain't scripted. Is that bioluminescence or is that a UFO? It looked like it may be a fish using bioluminescence. Maybe a ore fish. Or it could be an alien. What do you guys think this is? Put it in the comments below. Yes, I'm replaying it because this is interesting.
Yeah, that last one is hard to fake. If you look at how everyone's recording on their phones, everyone's talking about it, that is definitely indicate indicator showing you that it's a real video. As far as what I think it is, I think it may have been a, uh, some type of fish using bioluminescence to uh, use its light to try to maybe communicate to other fish. It looks extremely rare. Imagine if they had like a whole ocean filled with those things just doing those lights. Or it could be a UFO. Put in the comments below what you think it is. Hey, he was pretty smooth with it. You can get a net anywhere? That's a great idea. Who knows when the last time I hooped, man. I need to, man. I'm getting out of shape. Kind of reminds me of that scene on Lord of the Rings where he was like, whatever you do, don't fall in. And he had all those people from the last battles looking up at him. That's what kind of vibes I'm getting from this. But it is beautiful in a sense. Shout out to all the Lord of the Rings fans, man. If you're a huge Lord of the Rings fan, you're cool with me. Squids can shoot ink. This is why you should never try to catch a squid. Most people know that squids can shoot ink while underwater, but did you know that they can also shoot ink outside of water? Not only that, but they have the accuracy of a Navy SEAL sniper. Good thing this isn't toxic, but it's still freaky. And follow for more ocean videos. Reminds me of that scene on Jurassic Park uh, where that thing shot acid at his eyes. Man, I'm cutting the line. I see a squid on there. Cutting that boy. What is Lemix? Lemix is the world's first 100% hydrogen car with a removable cap system. It's a HUV. Before, we had the SUV. Now, we have the HUV. Hydrogen utility vehicle. Easy to use. This is how it's working. I've caps. Then, I just switch it. So, red, they're empty. Green, they're full. And orange, I can take it. One capsule, it's for 50 kilometers capacity. And we have six caps on board, for a result of 300 kilometers capacity, which is almost the same for an electric standard car. More of that. A liquid hydrogen tank. For a total range of 800 kilometers. It's a high performance, sustainable, user friendly, and high design car. That's a Pininfarina design. Who worked for Ferrari, Maserati, and many more? We can tell you that. I think that's a never seen before car. What is Namix? Namix is the world's first. If a hydrogen car is what I think it is being propelled on nothing but water, that is the future. No more of these Tesla charging stations. You know, even though it's a super cool car, you know, but if you're somewhere cold that gets really cold, I wouldn't recommend it. But these hydrogen vehicles, who knows how they will perform in the winter as well. But being charged off water, that would be tight. In 1908, Nikola Tesla created something so insane that it's been kept a secret for over 100 years. But even today, the information that I'm about to show you has been dismissed as just a coincidence or even the world's biggest lie. Before we examine Tesla's creation and the rumours surrounding it, I need to show you an event that happened strangely at the same time. Towards the end of June 1908, it's been reported that Nikola Tesla was pestering the Library of Congress. He apparently was making requests to see maps of the least populated areas in Siberia. Days later, on the 30th of June, in Tunoska, Siberia, something huge, estimated to be 100 metres in diameter, came down and 
and instantly charred 80 million trees over an area of 1,300 miles. This mysterious blast is still confusing scientists today, as the only logical conclusion could be a meteorite. And yet when eyewitnesses looked at the sky, they saw no vaporization trail which would be consistent if some kind of comet-like object was in the sky. Nor was a comet ever found, and even to this day, no crater has ever been discovered. So what was this bizarre event that took place a hundred years ago? Well, I'm not going to lie to you, Nikola Tesla looks an awful lot like the accidental culprit. In England, a gentleman wrote down in his journal that on the 30th of June, he did not need a night lamp to read his book. Even though it was 2am, the sky was so bright that it made it feel like it was perpetually daylight. Whilst aboriginals described seeing also a lingering bluish light in the sky, and one local Siberian man witnessed the actual blast. He claims he saw the sky miraculously open, and a beam of fire appeared in the forest. He then heard a loud crash and witnessed the sky closing. The ordeal was apparently so overwhelming that his wife had to carry him indoors so that he could lie down. However, something kind of isn't adding up here, because meteors don't do this. Their effects only last a few seconds, with seismic activity usually following. But this light show in the sky in Tunuska was reported by people globally for days, even after the 30th of June. And so, with all of that being said, I think it's time that I introduce to you the plot twist of the century. There is a rumour, whether it's true or not, it goes like this. Nikola Tesla is the person who caused the event at Tunuska. If you're not familiar with Tesla's work, he quite literally was a genius. He is the one who is responsible for the majority of technology that we still rely on today, including x-rays, radio, remote controls, robotics, electronic motors, lasers, and wireless electricity. Tesla saw the world differently, and he personally believed that the world, Earth, could be split open like an apple, just by applying the principle of mechanical resonance. I am confident that you'll make up your own mind on what happened on the 30th of June 1908, but here's what I heard about this event. In 1915, during an interview with the New York Times, Tesla disclosed his secret invention. He had created a teleforce, a large coil that could store large amounts of energy and electricity. Tesla claimed his instrument could harness unlimited free energy from space and could even convert it into a concentrated beam which Tesla could direct and aim at any given target. You probably knew that Nikola Tesla was a rather complicated character, but it's generally believed that he was a gentle soul, and his reason for inventing such a powerful instrument was to be used as a deterrent to other countries, as a sort of peacekeeping tool, as Tesla warned that his teleforce had the potential to do unimaginable things with just one zap. Take a look at this. Investor JP Morgan and other big wigs of society were interested in Tesla's latest invention, as he had already proved his capabilities when he invented the famous Wardenclyffe Tower, which could produce a whopping 100 million volts of electricity. And to all of my Texan subscribers out there, scientists at VivZiv Technologies revived Tesla's tower in your state, in Milford, with the scary hopes of getting rid of all electricity pylons and wires, and instead transmitting electricity completely through the air. I know, at this point, you're probably thinking, what's the connection between Nikola Tesla and the crazy event that happened in Tunuska, Siberia? Well, there are actually three fascinating stories. The first one, on the night that Nikola Tesla decided to test his teleforce instrument, is the same night that he accidentally triggered a comet. By sending millions of volts of electricity into the sky, he somehow caused this comet to come down, colliding into Tunuska. Our second story is even wilder. In 1908, Nikola Tesla created something so insane that it's been kept. What was Tesla working on? What type of beam? Could the beam possibly broke something off the firmament? Nah, no way. Well, it is interesting to think about what he was actually doing. And if you guys, if you made it this far, drop the 100% great video. 
And I just want to thank you guys for checking me out on this video. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.